What's up, everybody? You're watching Bean Sport Fishing TV, and we're in Boston. So we're in Boston. That's right. We're Boston. in Boston. Yeah. The goal of this trip was to hook and land a giant bluefin tuna. That's right. Her bucket list. But while we were there, we had to say hi to some friends and visit Fenway. You have to visit Fenway. Yeah, I mean, if you're in Boston, you got to visit Fenway. And we had to go visit our good friend, J.D. Martinez. Can he hit a ball at 90 miles an hour? He hit a ball at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> You know, Fenway is like the coolest baseball park. You know, so much history there. Just like such a great atmosphere. And it was just no better setting to have a, a hot dog and a cold beer. Now on to the main event to find the elusive bluefin tuna. Oh yeah. So these Boston waters are notorious for big bluefin. Yep. And if you guys watch the show Wicked Tuna, there's a team called the Hard Merchandise, and we're gonna go fishing with them, and they are the best of the best. So we're excited to team up with one of the best crews out there That's to right. try to land the bluefin. So we had to leave early because the conditions were extremely rough out there. Are we ready? Oh yes. Let's oh, go, girl. Do it. Girl we're power. Do it. Girl, girl power. power. Want to do it today? Yep. Alex is here. These ain't blackfins, Alex. I want to. Alex got plenty of blackfin practice. They said, "Hey, you know, race against conditions, race against the spot." So we were all in for it. watching the sunrise, it was pretty cool. So bluefin tuna fishing almost remind me of sword fishing. You know, let the bait soak for X amount of time, check them, and then after that, it's just waiting game. They know how to whip up some wicked good food. Some amazing breakfast and lunch. So it's definitely pretty thrilling to just sit back and then all of a sudden hear a real screaming. Yeah, oh yeah. Nothing like hearing an 80 wide going off. Oh, we are tight. It was cool to see different types of sharks. Oh yeah, sharks we never got to see before.
So we kept setting up, hoping that we would get that lucky bite. It was really interesting to see um, them in person, fish with them in person, and to see the show, and see that, that they actually were looking at their screen on the show and that they do get really excited about marking one. Because uh, once they did, they tried to get the bay at the right depth, and they started moving some things around. So it was uh, surprising to see that, just like the show, that once they're marking, they kind of kick into a, a high gear and make sure everything's right. So it's another thing to get the tuna to bite. Right. And then... Right up to the, right up to the tip. Don't, don't, don't. That's it, baby. You just have to trust in everything they're saying to you and how they're guiding you. Because these guys are true professionals. Good job, good job. Stay tight, stay tight. Don't go like stuck in the wrong angle, okay? Okay. There you go, baby. Stay tight, stay tight. Don't go like Do I rip the sinker off when it gets close or his leg keep going? Let him run, let him run, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Doing great, baby. Yeah, let him roll if he wants to roll. Okay. Yeah, let him roll. Don't worry then. about the sinker. Okay. That's not there, right? Okay. Really tight. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's how you're going to get tired. Yeah, on the down wave. Listen, I've watched a show Wicked Tuna and I've seen them lose these massive tunas by the boat. Turn it right a little bit. There we go, Jay. There we go, Jay. Good job. Got him on. Hot team high merch, baby. <laughs> high merch, baby. Who, who's better in New England than us? <laughs> The hard merchandise needs this fish. Like Marciano would say, over the rail and in the pail. <laughs> As it is, I need to get him in the boat. <laughs> Take the rope, take the rope. 
but there was success. We landed this giant, amazing looking tuna. Birthday bluefin tuna. <laughs> Fish, huh? That's a fish. Give her a hug. Give her a hug and a kiss. told me that I had to spit it out. Yeah, the words were eat it. You know, eat the heart. <laughs> she took a bite of heart and they're like, oh, no, you, you can spit it back out. And uh, it was too late at that point. All right, whatever. <laughs> And we get to the processing place. And it was pretty cool to see how they do it. And because it was a certain size with their commercial license, they had to sell it. got back around like 9.30 at night. We went to a restaurant, we ate, and then we turned back out to go right back out fishing uh, by 11.30. Oh so yeah. It was literally a turn and burn. And the next day, it was super rough out, and then we got out there again, set baits out, waited, and Chef Jay made us an amazing breakfast. Oh, yeah. Can't forget the bacon, a little of this, a little of that. Just mix it all up. You just mix it up, and it's called what you got. What you got. Put it in a pan. It's what you got. Chef Joe made us steak tips for lunch too. That was amazing. Oh yeah. The poor beagle is really cool because it looks like a mini great white cross with the mako. Very cool shark. I mean, Joe and I were both confused when it first started coming up with thought it was like a mako and then we saw the dorsal and saw it was a poor beagle. It's a very cool shark. Look at that. Mako is super cool too. Yeah, but I've seen a mako before, but only only two others. I've only seen two Makos. So we put the time in that day, but we didn't get a tuna bite. But we already, you know, the first day we had success. So we were happy. 
trip of a lifetime. You couldn't ask for a better time there in Boston. So if you're ever visiting Boston, there's just so much history you have to check out. Of course, like Paul Revere's ride. And we've had the freshest New England oysters at the Union Oyster House, which is the oldest restaurant in the country. But Boston's definitely a cool city. So we got back home and the hard merchandise team launched Angelica Seafoods. Mm -hmm. Where they package, freeze, and ship fresh seafood to your front door, which yeah. is awesome. I got the fresh seafood of Boston right to your front door no matter where you live in the country. So we had to compare bluefin and blackfin. Yes. So we rolled out some sushi using both mm -hmm. to do a taste test. Well, I'll throw this out there. I've heard you should probably let Bluefin rest a couple days, like three or four days or so, which we didn't really do. But I gotta say, I think the Blackfin really tastes better. It was like a lighter colored meat, softer, where the Bluefin was like a little bit chewier and gamier for the sushi we had. So I do think that the Blackfin was better, but we, haven't like had bluefin where we let it rest for a couple days. Right. So. That might be. It's a TBD you know? question still. A big thank you to Melody, Jay, Joe, the hard merch team for putting us on an amazing fish and just giving us an experience of a lifetime. You can also have that same experience because they do run charters. You guys can also order food from Angelica Seafoods, fresh seafood at your doorstep. And you got to check out the city of Boston. That's right. And uh, we're done. We're out of here. Until next time. We're in, okay, let's put our hands down. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. Five footers, you know. Five, you know, 35. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, but it's, it's, it's a heavy You'd be a pitcher though. You know, like huh? You'd be a pitcher. So fast, right? Yeah. There's one that's like, like hold one. There's a Ted Danson one. We got the first bait down, guys. The ones up here have Boston accents. The ones down there got Spanish ones, right? Yeah, Spanish I mean, ours doing the same. Both of them. Did so, you know? Did you know? I've seen a, uh, I've seen a mako do a, a cartwheel like ten feet out of the water. I have not. It's just big nubs of juices. Bring that on the plate. I'll definitely bring it. <laughs> no, thank I'll you. Bring you one, bro. <laughs> birthday bluefin. Astrid's birthday. How old were you now, Astrid? It was a unit.